Hey everyone, my name is Kara. I'm Julia, and we are so excited that you are joining us today. Here at Mountain Springs, this is such a fun season for us. So whether you come here to the building or you are part of our Family Restoration Center, we are so glad that you get to be part of our story. It's such a special season and we're jumping into part four of our series, RPMs, our final part in the series. It's been a great series. If you've missed any of them, I'd encourage you to go back and listen. We've had some great speakers and it's just been a joy to walk through this series. So before we jump into part four, let's worship.
Mountain Springs. It's so good to be with all of you this morning. My name's Bobby, and I am just a really big Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> hey, if you are new to Mountain Springs, a very warm welcome to you. Uh, Mountain Springs, can we just welcome those who are new to this community this weekend? We're so glad that you're here. We're wrapping up this series that we've been in called RPMs, where we're looking at different health areas in our life and how we can increase in those areas. And as we set up this series, there's a verse that we read in Luke's gospel, the second chapter, verse 52, and it kind of sets the, the tone for this whole series. It says that Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with man. And so we see these areas of health in the life of Jesus. And the key word is that there was increase in this life. Now Luke's, um, Luke is writing about the time that's um, often called the hidden years in the life of Jesus or the silent years in the life of Jesus, because there's not a lot that's written about um, the years between ages 12 and 30 about Jesus. But in this time, before his public ministry began, there's an increase. And so we look at these areas and we see that there's, it speaks of wisdom, and that's our mental life, stature, physical life. Favor with God is the spiritual life, spiritual connection. And then favor with man is his relationships. And so four areas of growth that Jesus grew in. And what we recognize is that Jesus, who is God in the flesh, God as man, if Jesus needed to increase in these areas, how much more is it important that we look at these areas in our own life and seek growth and increase? And so that's what this whole series is about. And while spiritual health is really primary in our life, these other three areas work alongside our spiritual health to really be all that God has called us to be and to really see our life flourish in him. And so over these past weeks, we've looked at spiritual and relational health. Last week, we looked at mental health with Steve Cuss. And if you missed that message, I'd encourage you to go back, look on the website, find the podcast, an incredible message about our mental health. And then today, we're going to be looking at the role that our physical health plays in all of this. Um, and now I know if we're looking at RPMS, this is out of order. Like physical health should not be last in the series, but we did this with a little bit of intentionality to it, okay? Because you know a couple weeks ago when you made all those resolutions, like I'm going to work out more, I'm going to eat healthier, I'm going to get to the gym. Well, here's the thing. At this time of year, uh, the gym parking lot is not as full as it was the week before. Uh, these things start to fall away. And so this message today is a reminder for us. Let's jump back in and let's pay attention to our physical health and let's look at why it matters to our life. And so let's pray and then we'll dig in. God, thank you so much for this time that we can gather together, that we can lift up your name in worship as a community, that we can know that we are meeting with a God who is living and active and wants to move and wants to speak into our life. And so we invite your voice to speak into our life. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so to set a foundation for what we're going to be looking at today, I want to turn to Psalms, and I want to look at a set of verses that's very familiar, but it sets the foundation for what we're going to be talking about, and it's Psalm 139. In verse 13 and 14, it says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. You see, you were wonderfully made. Every single one of us, we have been wonderfully made. We've been designed by God in such an amazing way. And not just our minds, not just our spirit, but our bodies are made by God in a wonderful way. Every detail of it, from the way your feet work and your hands work to your legs, every part of our body, made by God, created by him. And it's incredible. When God made Adam in the garden, he said that it was good. And he's not just talking about uh, the creation of humans. He's not just talking about our ability to think and create, but he's talking about our bodies as well. He made Adam in the garden and he said that it was good. And he meant all of it. 
You see, out of all creation, we are the only ones who've been made in the image and likeness of God. We're it. And so we're unique among all other created things. And because of that, we have this truth that we were fearfully and wonderfully made. As I was putting this content together, it made me think back to when my wife, Rachel, was pregnant with our oldest, uh, our oldest kid, our first son. Uh, there was one night where she was having some um, stomach pain, and we didn't know what was going on, so we went to see a doctor. And before I go on in the story, Rachel was fine, the baby was fine, and everything was okay. But in that moment, we didn't know that. We didn't know if it was going to be okay. So we went to the doctor, and the doctor didn't know what was going on, so he suggested uh, an ultrasound. And in the midst of this kind of chaos and this unknown of what was happening, there was this little burst of energy for both of us because we were getting a surprise. We were going to get to see a glimpse or at least a little bit of our baby and much earlier than we anticipated, much earlier than we ever thought this was going to happen. And so there was this little bit of excitement. And now you have to understand, I was in my mid-20s and I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. And so I was totally afraid that this image was going to pop on the screen and I wasn't going to be able to recognize what I was looking at. Like, is this just going to be some blob on the screen? How developed could it be? It's only been 10 weeks. He's, there's like, what am I going to see? And then the embarrassment of going, oh yeah, I see it. And not having a clue of what I'm looking at. Okay, what the reality was is when 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 the image popped on the screen, it blew me out of the water. It blew me out of the water. Because it had only been 10 weeks, he was so small, his entire body fit in the image. And so I could see from the bottom of his feet all the way to the top of his head. And I could see his arms and his hands. And I could see him in there moving. And it's just this wonderful image in my mind of being knit together in your mother's womb and being fearfully and wonderfully made. God made our bodies and he called it good. And I think it's really important that we talk about that perspective of our bodies being made good before we talk about physical health. And here's why. Because our society has an obsession with body image and it's completely unhealthy and it's warped and it's distorted. And what we see in so, on social media or in magazines is a distorted view of health and fitness. And it creates an idolatry of the body that is not what we're supposed to be working, t- working toward. When I see guys whose arms are bigger than my legs and we use Photoshop and camera angles and we don't know anything about the actual story behind the image. We don't know the health that's there, but when we equate physical health to distorted and Photoshopped images, then we, we're not looking at health in the way that God intends us to look at our bodies. We're not treating our bodies as the wonderful creation they are. And we can have multiple responses to this type of physical health. One is that we just say, it's not worth it. I can't do that. I'll never be that. So I'm going to eat whatever I want, whenever I want. I'm not going to work out. And who cares about this body? Because I'm going to heaven and I'm going to get a new body. The other side is that we obsess over our calories and our macros and we live at the gym and we work incredibly hard toward this image that we will never get to. But we work at it, we work at it, and it's unhealthy just the same. There's just as much uh, room for injury or for eating disorders or things like this where we're not taking care of our body. Neither of these extremes represent good stewardship of this gift of life that God has given us. And we talk a lot about stewardship in the church. We talk about stewardship of our finances. We talk about stewardship of our giftings, our abilities, our time, stewardship in all these areas. But we don't often talk about stewardship of our bodies. But when we see our bodies as a gift that God has given for us to steward well, it really shifts our perspective away from neglect. And it shifts our perspective away from this idolatry of perfection. But we see it as good. And something to be treasured, something to be taken care of. And it's so interesting to me that as our society and our culture paints this unrealistic image of what health and fitness look like, for all of us in our regular, everyday, normal life, um, technology has made it to where it's actually easier and easier and easier to live a very unhealthy lifestyle than just naturally naturally leaning towards a healthier lifestyle. 
Like, take these examples. We have cars. I'm so thankful for cars. But we can drive pretty much everywhere we go, and we do drive pretty much everywhere we go. And we don't walk as much as previous generations had to walk. We have machines that help us with manual labor. We don't use our hands in the same way that previous generations did. We have an abundance of food. And even more than that, we have an abundance of sugary food and sugary drinks. And while all of these things are incredible blessings... All of these things are incredible blessings in our life. It just means that we have to take a more intentional approach to stewardship of our health because it's harder to naturally lean in that direction. And so our bodies, they were made to move. God made our bodies to move. And what's so cool is that he gave us our bodies to move in such a way that that is part of stewarding our bodies well, is just by movement. And so we're gonna talk today about Movement, And so I have some thoughts around this that I'd like to share. And uh, if you have the Mountain Springs app, now's a great time to open it up. We have some message notes in there, and you can fill out the blanks and see uh, the scriptures, all of that in there. So now's a great time to do that. Thought number one around movement is this, that movement is a reflection of God's glory. Movement is a reflection of God's glory. See, we were made, we were created to reflect and display God's glory. So Isaiah 43, verse 7 says, everyone who is called by my name, and then he says, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. We were created for his glory. And as we go out into the world, created in his image, we are a reflection of his glory to the world around us. He created his image bearers with the ability to move so that we would go be moving representatives out into a world that does not know him. And then we would reflect and display the glory of God everywhere we go. And movement is stewardship of our physical health, and it's something that allows us to really live the mission, to truly be the hands and feet of Jesus. You know, Deuteronomy 6.5 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Some translations would say with all your strength. And so through movement, our bodies are conditioned to truly be able to serve him with all of our strength. And through that, we are a reflection of his glory. Now, Paul wrote letters to the church in Corinth. And the culture in Corinth at that time had a very unhealthy view of the body and how it is to be used. In some ways, similar to our culture today. And in his first letter, he writes this. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. You know, he writes this to the Corinthians, but it's true for us today that we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. We're carriers of his presence everywhere we go. And so we're called to steward our bodies well to glorify him and to reflect his glory wherever we go as we move throughout our life. Thought number two is that movement builds character. Movement builds character. Paul, again, when writing to the church in Corinth, he makes this wild statement about his physical health and how that connects to character. So in chapter nine, verse 24, he says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? But only one receives the prize, so run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do not receive, or they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. And then catch this. He says, but I discipline my body and I keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Now, yes, Paul's talking about spiritual principles here, but he's using a physical metaphor as he talks about it. And at the end, he connects the discipline of his body to building character, where he talks about not being disqualified. You see, movement and exercise is a really practical way to tell ourselves and remind ourselves that we can do hard things, that we can do hard things. And as our energy and power is lessened, there's an increased dependency on the power of God at work in our life and enabling us to push through the hard things. 
to push through the hard things. Now, I'm not just talking about pushing through on that long run or pushing through that heavy lifting session, but the hard things in life. With God, we push through the hard things in life, and our physical activity can remind us of that spiritual truth. I saw, or I got an email from a young mom in our church this week. She wanted to talk to me about her own journey of health and fitness. And so she went from somebody who didn't really work out at all to someone who now is in CrossFit competitions. It's awesome. Um, so she had some realization about how God works in our life and how he builds character through movement. So I want to read you a line from her email. She says, It is not by strength alone that I can do this, but by God's strength flowing through me. I used to be one of those people that was very doubtful that I could do anything physically challenging. But now I know that with God's help, I can do so much more than I ever thought was possible. You know, she's, she's not just talking about CrossFit here. Movement has helped her to connect the dots between uh, the power of God at work within us and the ability to face the hard things in life and with him overcome. So my encouragement is that we let God's character grow within us. Let it grow within you. Number three is that movement increases our joy. Movement increases our joy. There's a principle that we find in most areas of stewardship. And the principle is that when we steward the gifts of God well, that we find that God rewards that action in different ways. He rewards our good stewardship in different ways. And one of the ways that we often find rewards, and this is proven scientifically in so many cases, is that our lives are filled with an increasing level of Joy. This is true in generosity. It's true in serving others. It's true in the use of our talents and our abilities, but it's also true in the gift of, with the gift of stewarding our bodies well through movement. And it's all part of the way that God designed us. It's all part of his design. Physical activity releases hormones that are needed for mental health, and they allow our brains to be more balanced and happy. And so when we incorporate movement into our life, over time, the release of these hormones is a tool to fight against and to protect against depression, anxiety, and the way we handle stress. And it helps us to, over time, experience an, an increase of joy in our life. And God designed our bodies in that way that when we move, we are happier and we are healthier. Now, I've had an Apple Watch for many years. I had a Fitbit before that. And if any of you have had a sports watch or some kind of a fitness tractor, tracker, you, tractor, going back to my country roots here, folks. <laughs> if you've had a sports watch or any kind of tracker, you'll know that the recommendation is 10,000 steps a day, that you get 10,000 steps in every day. And some of you hear that and you're like, yeah, no kidding. I get that before breakfast. And others of you are going, 10,000 steps? You may as well ask me to run a marathon. Are you kidding me? I'm not getting to 10,000 steps. We're all at different places on the spectrum, but that's the recommendation. Okay, now there was a study that was in the uh, U.S. and in the U.K., and they were studying... Um, some moderately active adults and some who were not very active. And they were studying step counts over a two-week period of time. And so they increased step counts, they decreased step counts with these two groups of people. And they wanted to see the relationship of step counts to feelings of anxiety and depression or an increase of joy towards the way that you were able to handle stress, all related to step count. Okay, now here's what they concluded. Uh, they concluded that on average, a person needed to get 6,000 steps in. So not 10,000, just 6,000 steps uh, to fight against these feelings of depression, anxiety, and just overall fulfillment in life. If you were under 6,000 steps average, then you were more prone to experience feelings of anxiety depression, and an overall lower quality of the way you feel about life. Okay, so that's kind of the threshold, 6,000 steps. Now, here's what they also found, that in the U.S., on average, a person's daily step count is only 4,774 steps. So when we look at that, on average, 
most of our society is below that threshold of what we need to actually experience the increase of joy that God gave us. As a society, we are not using our bodies the way God made them and intended for them to be used. And so as a result, we're missing out on the reward of joy that he designed for us to receive. We're missing out on it. And I think as Christians, it's important to, for us to push back against what's normal in society, what's normal in culture, not just in the ways that are, we normally think of and talk about in church, but that we take steps in other areas as well. And that we take this idea of stewarding, stewarding our body seriously. We have one life. We have one body. What a gift from God. And we're to use it well. I know for myself what it means to experience more joy through movement and through physical activity. I don't just know it because I read it in a study or I read it in a book, but I know it to be true in my own life. And so I talk about it and I want to share it with you. I want to share some of my journey with you because what I've experienced, I want for you. There's joy that comes from movement and joy that comes from the Lord in the way that he made us. A few years ago, um, I really wanted to work on these RPMS areas of my life. I really wanted to, to take some intentional steps to do better in all of these areas and to be healthier. And the reality is, is that if you can increase your level of health in any of these four areas, you're going to experience more joy in life. That's for sure. And I wanted to work on these areas and I knew the area that I needed the pendulum to swing the most was in the area of physical health. I love hiking, I love being outdoors, I love being an active person, but regular exercise was not something that was on my radar and not something that I really cared that much about. But as I looked at growing these areas of physical health and mental health and um, all, all of these areas, I knew that I needed to incorporate regular exercise into my life. And so I took a step, I took a step and I added exercise to my calendar. Something simple, a simple but very intentional step. So when I'd look at my calendar, there it was. I knew that I had space for it, that I had created space for working out, for exercise, for something physical in my day. But also every time I looked at my calendar, I was reminded, hey, dude, you're going to do this today. You're going to work out today. And so I started just simply walking. I just started walking and what was amazing was that over a fairly short amount of time, I started to really feel the impact. And not just physically, but I could actually feel my stress level lower. And I could feel when I had a, um, a day where I was feeling anxious, that I, after my walk, that would be lowered. I could tell the way that I was handling stress was different. I could uh, hear God as I pray just in a new way, in a clear way. When I had big decisions to make, I could think more clearly. It was like I could actually feel the benefits of physical activity. I loved it. It's been amazing. Um, through regular and intentional movement, I've begun to experience flourishing in Christ in a new way. Now, I have two sons who are both in high school, and they run track and cross country. So as I started to walk faster and I started to walk longer, they wanted me to start running. Now, I told them the same thing over and over. I told them over and over. I hate running. I can't run. Uh, I'm too old to start running. Not that I'm old in any way, but I'm too old to start running. That's for sure. And I'm perfectly fine just walking around. Okay. Okay. Well, during that cross-country season, there was going to be a race, and <laughs> for some reason, they hosted a parent and coaches race. <laughs> and as soon as that was posted, that that was going to happen, my oldest son, Jackson, he was like, Dad, you're doing it, right? Like, you're going to do it, right? So I'm like, ah, oh, nothing in me wants to do this. So I, so I look at it. Okay, it's, it's a 5K race. That means it's a little over three miles. And I've been walking. So I'm like, well, if anything, I can at least walk this thing and I can finish it. So, okay, I'll sign up to do it. Now, here's the thing. I'm a very competitive person. So, totally intended on walking that thing. But I'm at the starting line, and when that gun went off, I took off with the rest of them. Now, here's the thing. I don't know anything about running. 
I don't know anything about my body. I don't know anything about how to pace. So I'm just going off with the crew. Well, let me just tell you, that was dumb. It wasn't very long before I thought my heart was going to beat out of my chest and my legs were going to fall off. And I'm like, (gasps) it wasn't very long at all before I'm walking, right? (laughs) I'm back walking and it's not the normal pace walk that I usually do. But then I'd see a group of people and it's like, got to look tough. So I start jogging a little bit. (laughs) Then I'm back to walking again. But here's, ultimately I finished. I was sore, but I finished, right? Okay. Now, even though I didn't run the whole thing, I did run some of it, and I didn't hate it. And I told you I'm competitive. I'm also very competitive against myself. And so I thought, okay, I got to do this again, and this time I got to run the whole thing, and I'm going to finish it running the whole thing, and I'm going to get a better time, and I'm going to do this. And so once I recovered, I signed up for a really simple program to start running, and to start getting better. And now, amazingly, I don't know how, but that is my primary mode of exercise and fitness in my life is that I run. And my life is better in so many ways because of increasing my intentionality with my physical health. You know, as I run, I'm taking care of my mental health. I'm a better husband because of physical activity. I'm a healthier person. My spiritual life is alive when I meet with God on the trail. And I'm learning how to take care of this one body and this one life that I've been given to be a good steward of this incredible gift. And the icing on the cake is that I get to do this with my kids. I get to do this with my kids. So in order to get better at a 5K, I I had to sign up for a race. So I signed up for a race and I put it on my calendar and I started my training program. And when that day came to run that first race, An amazing memory that I'll always have is that my oldest son ran it with me. And I'm so thankful that he didn't run his pace. He ran, he ran my pace. Um, But all along the way, he just kept saying, dad, you got this. You can do this. You're going to finish this. You got this. And he even let me cross the line first. (laughs) But I ran it and I finished it. I have these memories with my kids here in just a couple weeks. I'm going to run a half marathon with both of my boys. And uh, I'm just so thankful for this gift of health and the opportunity to experience life with my boys and, and, and teach all three of my kids that taking care of our bodies matter. This is a beautiful gift from God. It's a beautiful gift from God. I'm so thankful for this. My life is filled with joy that just a couple of years ago I didn't know possible. I didn't know it was possible, but our bodies were made to move. And as followers of Jesus and image bearers of him, we need to take this idea of stewardship seriously. It's like in the same way that we look at our finances and we plan for long-term outcomes. What if we were to look at our physical health and plan for long-term outcomes? That we're more engaged as parents because of it. We can be more engaged as grandparents. We can be more engaged as leaders. And even in our spiritual life and in kingdom work, we can be more engaged in kingdom work. You see, I don't want to be sidelined from the work of the kingdom because I didn't care for my physical health. But I want to steward this well. I don't want to be sidelined. So what do we do? What do we do? My encouragement is this that you start small and you move the needle. You start small and move the needle. If you look at your life and you're like, I've not been a very physically active person, don't go sign up for a race next week. That's not going to benefit you at all. Start small, but start somewhere. And then just move the needle. Maybe it's trying to take an extra extra few steps a day. Maybe it's taking the stairs when you could take an elevator. Maybe it's signing up for a class at the gym. There's so many options available for us to just begin to move the needle, even if it's just a little bit, you're going to find yourself more energized for other disciplines in your life. And your life and the life of those around you is going to be better because of it. There's a trap where we can often find ourselves feeling selfish for taking care of our physical health. That we feel selfish for taking the time. But I can tell you, I can promise you, that the lives of those around you are better when you take care of yourself and your ability to, to care for others is better when you care for yourself. And it's all about moving the needle. First Timothy 4.8 says, 
For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. When I read that, what it tells me is that physical health and movement, it's not everything. It's not everything. But it is something. And it is something we should pay attention to. And when that's partnered with paying attention to our relational health, our mental health, and most importantly, our spiritual health, then we have the ability to experience a flourishing in our life with Christ like never before. And so in this new year, let's move the needle in our relationships, our marriage, our relationship with our kids, where we're intentionally building community and taking the risk of being known this year. Let's move the needle. Let's move the needle in our physical health. Let's move the needle in our mental health. What are we thinking about? Are our thoughts leading us to be closer to Jesus? And most importantly, let's move the needle in our spiritual health. If you've never said yes to Jesus, now is a great time to say yes to him, to start this year in a different way than you've ever started a year before and say yes to relationship with him. And if you have said yes to Jesus, what, re- what new habits or rhythms are you putting into your life to really see an increase in your spiritual health this year? It's amazing how in all these areas, small but consistent change really leads to a significant difference in the quality of life you had. And so in, as we started this message, just by saying Jesus increased in these areas. If Jesus, God in flesh, increased in these areas, how much more important is it that we focus on these areas in our life and that we see increase as well? And so let's commit to really working on these areas of our life and see and experience a flourishing in our life with Jesus like never before. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much that you have created us to move and to be healthy and to have healthy relationship with you and healthy relationship with others, that you've created our minds as such that when that we can face and fight anxiety and depression and that we can experience joy in our life all because of you and all because of the way that you made us and designed us. God, we're grateful. As we go into our week, would, would we be awesome followers of you, that we would see where you're moving and that we would follow you. We love you, Jesus. We give our life to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We are so glad that you joined us today. Join us next week as we kick off a brand new series called He Gave, and it's all about God's generosity towards us by sending his son because he loves us so much and how we get to now live a generous life. You're not going to want to miss it. We love you guys. Have a great week.